Hello. Um, I've been messaged by quite a few people recently that uh, don't believe me when I ha say that I have Windows 98 running on a fairly modern system. And um, ironically, most of these messages and comments were about a video that I posted uh, a year ago or even more, uh, where I had it running on a Phenom 2 X2 um, CPU. Uh, with a fairly outdated, well nowadays outdated, AMD chipset, the 785. Um, and that's not even the most unbelievable thing. Um, obviously now I have made videos about it running on an i5 computer, which is a bit more um, sensational, I would say, because um, the newer platforms obviously uh, rationalized uh, away a lot of... Um, uh, features and uh, legacy f features uh, required by um, older operating systems and this was more of a study to uh, well it was two parts first of all it was more of a study to uh, actually find out how well these operating systems run um, in the first place on these uh, things and if they could get to get, if they could be made to run at all and the second part was um, I wanted to make a system, the i5 computer, that runs software and games and operating systems ranging from the early or mid 90s to uh, the very latest, the very latest stuff. So I had to find a platform that would allow me to do so. And since I wanted to upgrade my secondary computer anyway, I sold that off and bought some new stuff. This is what I came up with, this is the computer right here, this is a Gigabyte P85 D3 um, motherboard. I picked this one for one simple reason. For legacy features you're always going to have to add components that would replicate those. Um, so I needed a board with a lot of PCI slots and this uh, was actually a very affordable main board that offers four PCI slots. Now obviously um, in the 8 and 9 series chipsets and also some 7 series chipsets and the Sandy Bridge platform as well, uh, the um, PCI bus was erased. Uh, it, it, it doesn't have it. Instead, it's replicated by a little bridge chip, uh, in this case made by ITE. It's an IT8892E. Um, now, it's this little chip right there. I don't know if you can see it, but that is uh, what's creating the PCI bus. And the problem with that is that it's very closed. Like you can't find data sheets or register layouts layouts in case you want to fix infidelities in the BIOS that configures that chip. Um, but for now it's been working out pretty much okay-ish uh, so let me just give you a little tour of what I have here let's turn off that light which is bright oh wait maybe not so from the top to the bottom this is my uh, Mecomsoft SC501 capture card for component video, HDMI, DVI um, and uh, VGA RGB video even 15 kilohertz sources this is the graphics card that I use on Windows, uh, on modern Windows platforms. This is a Galaxy or Galax GeForce GTX 750 Ti. I picked this one. It was a lot more expensive than the other models, but I picked this one because it's single slot, as you can see. The only model that has that. Um, this card is inactive when I'm using a, an old op operating system. Now here we have an Adaptic AHA2940 uh, classic SCSI controller and the reason for that is plain and simple because one of my other uh, little hobbies so to say is using legacy burners um, so we have here this Yamaha external burner for SCSI bus this Teak and this Philips and also burned down there this white box on the bottom is actually a, a Sony burner from 1993 um, and that's all handled by this SCSI card 
Now moving down one slot, this is an Aztec PCI 168AP sound card based on the ASFIN 3328 chipset. I picked this sound card because out of all the sound cards I have, this is the only one that will give me sound, um, or sampled or sound blaster compatible sound in DOS applications. And I've tried quite a few and I have a few more coming in from eBay that I'm going to test like uh, Ford Media, uh, FM801 or um, uh, Ariel Vo Vortex or um, let's see there was one more um, oh yeah it was a Crystal CS4624 AC97 compatible codec that is also said to have several different methods of achieving Sound Blaster compatibility so I'll see how that goes when when it comes in moving one slot down this is kind of a bummer because it has a Realtek chipset on board that is an early enough revision to have a working driver for Windows 98, but unfortunately uh, not Windows NT, like the Realtek 8168 or 8110 or 1, I don't remember quite off the bat right now. Um, never got NT4 drivers, unfortunately, so I had to do this. This is a PCI Realtek 8169 card, uh, Gigabit Ethernet. And the problem with that is that on Windows 98 it does not um, it does not boot on this system with the standard Windows 98 drivers. So I had to use the legacy feature of using NDIS2 DOS drivers, which actually works fine, but it's not the fastest option, obviously. I can't get it past like 28 megabytes per second. Which is fast enough, obviously it's faster than fast Ethernet, but it's not ideal, but it'll serve the purpose. Now, moving one slot down, this is also kind of a bummer, because while I have managed to get the onboard SATA ports working on Windows 98, Windows NT is extremely picky on the modern systems, whether it will boot or not, so I had to use this for the older operating system. This is a Promise SATA 150TX2+. Plus. Um, uh, SATA, P PCI SATA controller card and since I needed a parallel port, this mainboard features two COM ports and a parallel port he a header um, I was quite uh, quite clever if I say so myself because this bracket actually doesn't belong to the SATA card but actually it's a parallel port header bracket but there is just enough space to have the PCI card in the same slot there. Uh, obviously the bracket is not attached to that. And on the bottom here this is a second PCI Express uh, X16 slot. It's running internally at X4 and it's uh, G4 7800 GTX. Uh, it's quite an old card obviously but it's the last card that has uh, driver support for both NT4 and 98. Um, Obviously on Windows 98 you can actually go higher. I have a 7900 GT um, here that'll do the job on Windows 98, but the uh, last Windows NT driver to be released was 77.72, which has one entry for the 7800 GTX, ironically. I don't know why they kept that for Windows NT. And the amazing thing is, even though that Windows, even though Windows 98 got driver support up until version 8.1.98, um, it never got an official entry for uh, the 7 series, which is quite odd because 7 series uh, support is very functional in the um, NVIDIA drivers for Windows 98. So I'm able to use this with a modded driver. That isn't uh, that is is modded to have the entries for that in the in file. Uh, what else can I say about this? Um, here we have the hard disks. Here we have the um, 160 gigabyte Western Digital Drive, which is connected to the Promise controller. This has all the older operating systems on it. And this is my 500 gigabyte Seagate drive, which is connected to the onboard uh, SATA ports. This actually is for Windows XP and 7, maybe 8 later too, but we'll see. Um, 7 is already set up, and um, Windows 98 too, 
Windows NT was running earlier, but I um, decided to change the hard disk configuration a bit, so it's not installed at the moment. Um, but yeah, um, I have eight gigabytes of o OCC RAM. This is one stick. Um, the problem with this was before I got this board, I had didn't find a single board which this would boot on because this RAM just sucks and. Um, to achieve its rated timings, it needs 1.9 volts. I can I can't even go higher than 1.7 volts on this motherboard. But on this motherboard, this RAM actually works stable at 1333 and even 1600 speeds, um, if I set the timings accordingly a bit higher uh, to cope with the lower voltages. Um, right now, I only have two gigabytes installed. Uh, for the simple reason that I was testing something earlier and just couldn't be arsed to put it back yet. <clears throat> this is a uh, uh, LC power cooler sitting on top of an of a Core i5 4500 uh, four, no 4670 that's it. Um, pretty good CPU. It's a quad core obviously, and. Um, yeah, that's uh, what's running the whole operation. This is a some Delta power supply, 350 watts dual rail, does the job. Um, now, I got a bit clever with the IDE port here because um, I couldn't find I, I could I didn't want to sacrifice conventional memory or uh, other things to run DOS games in pure DOS if I had the need to and I wanted CD audio so I got this little thing here um, obviously SATA drives they don't have the audio outputs on the on the drives but this IDE controller here that I bought for five euros uh, on eBay actually does the job quite well uh, I had to fiddle around with it a bit because it has a header that d doesn't have pins on it but I bridged those and then suddenly it started working I don't know why um, this this can actually act as a bridge in both the both directions I can actually use SATA drives on an IDE motherboard or controller with this ad uh, adapter but I'm using it in the opposite configuration right now to, con to actually connect an IDE drive to the SATA bus um, and this is just an NAC burner with an audio output going to this sound card so I think this is quite a nice solution for this modern system uh, what else yeah that's that's pretty much it so let's boot this thing I have it in the boot menu here right now you can see um, it lists my Adaptex SCSI adapter as legacy SCSI card this is the uh, Promise SATA controller. This is the Windows 7 drive, the 500 gigabyte one. This is the IDE drive. As you can see, it's being detected. Um, so yeah, let's just put Windows 98 here. Oh wait, this is important. Um, let's pause this. This is a tool written by a guy called Rayer, Martin Rehack, uh, which enables routing of a signal that is disabled on modern uh, south bridges and supposedly that's going to fix some compatibility issues with DOS games and PCI sound cards I didn't really notice a change but it detects a PCI bridge that supposedly gets you know fixed successfully so I just keep it in there in the auto exec oh yeah I turned off the system earlier um, yeah let's wait for it to boot here you can see for a brief second the configuration screen of the uh, DOS Realtek Gigabit Ethernet driver. I never said Windows 98 was a very fast operating system. To boot anyway, so here we go. Um, yeah. Let's tour the uh, device manager. So it looks like it looks a bit like a mess, um, and it's all a bit hacky. This is my custom version of Windows ninety eight called Windows ninety eight SE Plus, which has most most of the updates and fixes already 
um, integrated. It's a private distribution, so no, you can't have it. Um, and it has a quite a large driver database. This is quite interesting. You can see the hard disk controllers um, um, group, and you can see that it says SATA controllers. That's actually a patch I bought made by Rudolf Löw, um, who wrote a patch to support the SATA controllers, the onboard SATA controllers, because Windows 98 has an interesting quirk. As far as I understand it, it's its IDE driver is rooted in the in the very early days of uh, computing. Well, not that early, obviously, but it supports only two uh, two EIDE channels, meaning four drives, and these have quite a bit more because you can connect six, sometimes eight or ten drives, and Windows gets confused by that and will never actually boot. It'll throw a blue screen about a PCI IDE controller running in compatibility mode, but it'll never actually boot. So I got this patch. I bought this patch uh, for ten dollars. I don't know. I I don't. I didn't like shedding money off to patch an old operating system like this. But you know, I like toying around with these things, so I just couldn't stop myself. Um, so yeah, that's working. Um, this is quite an odd occurrence. I have legacy support disabled for USB devices, and it still finds a PS2 port mouse. So I disabled it because maybe it causes issues. There's quite a lot of undetected devices here um, but I don't really care about those because they are not vital. Uh, for example this here is the real the Gigabit Realtek which I cannot install the drivers for it's using the DOS driver right here. Um, the PCI multimedia device is the onboard audio that I have dis uh, that I don't have disabled in case I need it on Windows 7 Serial controller, I don't know what that is. The SM bus obviously has no driver on Windows 98. PCI card, I have no idea what that is either. PCI communication device, eh, who knows? I don't I don't even know. But yeah. Here we have the Soyuz SCSI controller. Now you might wonder what that is. That's just a virtual device created by Alcohol 120 uh, for a virtual CD ROM. This is the Promise controller. Uh, you might notice that a few of these driver names are abbreviated, but that's because the driver database is so big, it actually goes above the limit uh, in the internal database that stores all the names. So I shortened the name so the driver database doesn't get too big. So you can't really know what the devices are, but at least Windows won't crash whenever you install a device. Um, this is the Aztec sound card with its legacy device. Uh, no, this one, I think. Nope, this one. Yeah. Here you can see all the resources. The uh, I.O. range, the 220 classic sound blaster range, 388 classic OPL3 range, uh, the DMA channel, interrupt request 5, all the standard stuff. Um, I showed Doom running on that earlier. This is the GeForce GTX 750Ti. I disabled it to avoid resource conflicts. This is I. There's a floppy disk controller, even though the mainboard doesn't even have a floppy disk controller. That's kind of quite funny. Um, this is a GTX 7800. You can even show that here in the NVIDIA control panel. Can you see it? Oh, it's a fi 4 five seventy. Sorry, not a five four six seventy. Here, PC Express X4, plenty plenty of speed for this purpose. Two fifty six megs of VRAM. 700 GTX. Um, yeah, here you can see quite a few CD-ROM drives. This is the virtual CD-ROM drive. This is the SATA to IDE bridged CD-ROM drive. These are the CD-ROM drives currently connected to the SCSI controller. And disk drives. Here you see my uh, um, the drive connected to the Promise controller. And this is this is the 500 gigabyte drive. It's just listed as a generic IDE disk type zero. And if you look in the in my computer, you'll actually find that you are able to communicate with that drive because I also have Paragon NTFS for Windows 98 installed, so I can browse the Windows 7 partition without any issues. Permissions don't exist on Windows 98, obviously. Um, if I select properties, yeah, file system NTFS, 64 gigabyte. 
um, I'm going to have data partitions for all the all the software and games later. That's also why the Windows 98 partition is only 32 gigabytes in size. But yeah, that's that's just a general overview. Internet access is done using Opera 11.64. If it's starting, I don't know. There it is. Whoops. Oh, oh. Something something happened, but okay, there it is. Working. Um, even have whoops. YouTube.com slash HTML. We'll see that this actually somewhat supports HTML5 and thus you can watch YouTube videos without installing Flash Player, which I could do, but it's just not to because I have my main computer to watch YouTube videos, obviously, but it would work. Uh, let's just like a random video here. There it is. Working quite happily. But yeah, that's just a general overview of my i5 computer. I will have more videos of it running Windows NT and uh, experimenting a bit with Windows 98 and NT later on. So yeah, um, thanks for watching, I guess.